the last class we saw an example of a reaction two step reaction which is metal going to metal plus adsorbed and then metal plus adsorbed going into the solution right and then derive the expression for the impedance for this reaction. So, what I want to do today is to take a similar reaction and I would like you to try getting the impedance expression for this I will guide you through the steps. So, the first step is same as what you saw in the last example which is metal going to metal plus adsorbed that is metal losing an electron and it becomes an ion. Second that ion loses one more electron and goes out. So, the first step is also a Faradayic reaction, second step is also a Faradayic reaction. Now, if you write the mass balance equation for this, it is going to look similar to the equation you wrote yesterday. You have to recognize that K1 depends on potential, K2 also depends on potential because both of them involve electron transfer, right. So, in the previous example, we would write K1 as K10 e power B1 e. Previous example K2 was a constant, but in this case, it is going to be similar dependence, exponential dependence B2 may or may not be equal to B1. Now, if I say that theta is the fractional surface coverage for m plus adsorb, I can say d theta by d t gamma the first step is going to be k 1 1 minus theta, second step is going to be k 2 theta. So, the expression will look similar to what you got before except that k 2 is a function of potential now previously k 2 was a constant. If you want to write the expression for the Faraday current, what should I do? How many moles of electrons do I get from the first step? So many moles per square centimeter per unit time. Multiply by Faraday constant, I will get the current, current density actually. Yeah. Now, the second step that also gives us an electron. So, I should write the Faraday current as coming from the first step as well as the second step. Okay. Now, can you find the steady state theta value? If we apply only a DC potential, we can set the mass balance equation to 0 and rearrange correct. We are looking at a slightly different equation where the second step also involves transfer of electron. So, in the first step metal loses an electron, but it still sits on the top of the surface. So, it is m adsorbed m plus adsorbed. The second step it loses one more electron and goes into the solution. So, it may be like copper becoming copper plus it is still on the surface copper plus becoming copper 2 plus and going into the solution. So, in this case K2 depends on potential it contributes to the current, the second step contributes to the current. Therefore, the mass balance equation will look similar, will look similar because previously also we would have written k 1 1 minus theta minus k 2 theta as gamma d theta by d t. But that k 2 was a constant, now k 2 is a function of potential. Faraday current of course, has one more term now and both are additive first step produces an electron, second step produces an electron. So, I can get the expression for theta s it looks similar, but k 2 value will keep changing with potential previously k 1 value was changing, but k 2 was not changing. In this example k 2 will keep changing. You can write the expression for Faraday current under steady state condition it is pretty straightforward. All that you need to say is that recognize that potential is E d c, k 1 is k 1 d c, k 2 is k 2 d c, theta is theta s s here. Okay. Now, what I would like you to do is to derive the expression for the Faraday current when you apply a AC along with the DC. 
So, I had done this before for a slightly simpler case. Let us do it now for case where you have second step also contributing to the Faraday current. So, I am going to say the potential is d c plus a c 0 sin omega t and I will use certain approximations k 1 d c multiplied by likewise k 2 d c multiplied by e a c where e a c is the time dependent function here. So, what this means is we look at k 1 it is a function of potential we write it as e d c plus e a c we expand the exponential of b 1 e a c in Taylor series we truncate it. So, we go through few steps and then come to this approximation. Since we are going to do this frequently, you should be able to write under small EAC values, under small amplitude perturbation, we can make these approximations. Whenever k's are dependent on potential, exponentially dependent on potential, you should be able to write this. Theta, we expand in Taylor series around the DC. and we can approximate this again after truncating the second and higher order terms. We just keep the first order term and leave the remaining. So, if I can approximate k 1, k 2 and theta I can substitute here and I would get an expression for the Faraday current where I would write all the constant terms, constant here meaning not depend on EAC, constant term would come here and all the term with first order EAC would come here and then second order and higher order I will neglect them. So, I would write this as I d c plus I a c for the Faraday current. So, what I would like you to do is first group this, we still have to find what is d theta by d e here, I have not given that yet and that is not going to be the same as what you got in the previous class. Correct. So, all that I need to do is substitute for k 1, substitute for theta, substitute for k 2 and theta. When I do this, I am going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, likewise 1, 2, 3, 4. I am going to get 4 terms from the first expression, 4 terms from the second expression. And E a c square I am going to neglect that. So, I would get effectively 3 terms from the first expression here and 3 terms from the second expression here, second expression is this, first expression is underlined here. Out of that the first term is going to be constant, likewise here the first term is going to be constant. So, please write that and group it. So, you can guess or you can verify that the constant term will become the steady state condition. If you put k 1 d c theta s s, when you get all these products sorted out and arranged, rearranged, the first term corresponding to this will become f k 1 d c 1 minus theta s s plus k 2 d c theta s s that is going to be the i d c for the Faraday current. The second and third term of the first part and the second and third term for the second part will give you something like this which is e a c and then the fourth term we are going to throw it away anyway. So, the second term
So, you get 4 in the first, 4 in the second, out of which the fourth term each we are going to throw it away. First term is going to go towards the constant, mid two terms are going to come as the first order term and you got mid two terms for the first expression, mid two term for the second expression. So, you get 4 terms within the EAC, 1, 2, 3 and 4 for the EAC. Are you getting something similar? I mean you may not get it exactly in this form, maybe in a slightly different form, but it should be equal to this. So, in order to do this, you should be able to expand in Taylor series, truncate, rearrange and do the algebra correctly. If you are done with this, then I would like you to get the expression for d theta by d e by taking the mass balance equation, expanding each term in Taylor series truncate after the first term, first order rearrange. So, now the Faraday current is written in terms of I D C and I A C and if I want the impedance I should write, if I want the impedance I should get it as E A C by I F A C for the Faraday impedance. or I can write the admittance as I A C by E A C. Basically, this is I D C and I A C, it is easy for me to write I A C by E A C. This term here is the Faradayic admittance, as long as I can get this d theta by d e correctly, I have an expression for the Faradayic admittance, which means I can get the Faradayic impedance, I can get the total impedance. For this reaction, if you give me the parameter values, of k 1 0, k 2 0, b 1, b 2 and gamma. At any frequency I should be able to tell you the total impedance of the system. Of course, you should also give me the double A capacitance value. Mechanistic analysis basically requires that you be able to write the impedance for a given reaction. That is the first step. Next is try various values of k 1 0, k 2 0 etcetera and see if that result can match with the observed impedance. Not just that, you are not going to only match the impedance, you can also measure the DC current as a function of DC potential. You can go to DC potential, measure the current, go to another potential, measure the current and usually it is done at a slow rate. So, it is almost like you are measuring it, waiting for some time, going to the next level, measuring, waiting for some time and then going to the next level. Although most of the time people go at a rate of 1 or 2 millivolts per second, maybe 0.1 millivolts per second depending on how fast or how slow the reaction is. So, you would get an expression for IFDC that also should match with the observed DC polarization current. In addition, the impedance taken at multiple DC potential should match with whatever you are predicting here. So, in the electrical circuit analogy, what we did was just take the impedance and see if we can model that with another circuit, but we never worried about what is the DC current. There is a difference between taking the DC current and taking the impedance at 0 frequency. Okay. this is DC current, you get DC current as a function of E, DC current or current density to be precise. So, total current in the system when we say solution resistance is not significant and if it is a DC capacitance is not going to allow any current to go through. So, total current is going to be same as the Faraday current. Now, Faraday impedance on the other hand Faraday admittance is I A C by E A C, Faraday impedance is inverse of that. This is going to be slope, I even at 0 frequency it is going to be equal to the slope of that. So, it is like saying y versus x dy by dx at some point x, x 0 or whatever point. So, I have an expression for Faraday impedance, I have an expression for Faraday current. I A C that I A C at omega equal to 0 is not the same as I D C. 
omega equal to 0 or omega tending towards 0 basically it means you are still changing the potential very slowly and monitoring the change in current. You change the potential little fast monitor the change in current, change the potential little slowly monitor the change in current, change it even more slowly monitor the change in current. Okay. Then I can go asymptotically and say when I change it extremely slowly this is how much the current will change. It is still telling you the value of change in current not the actual current. Okay. So, in the electrical circuit model we never use the DC data. Here we would we should I do not know whether everybody does, but we should fit both the polarization data and the impedance data using one kinetic expression. Anyway, we will come back to that point again later when we compare different methods again. But right now I would like you to get the value for d theta by d e by taking the mass balance equation. When you take the mass balance equation and expand in Taylor series in the last example we would have said k2 is a constant. Now, I cannot do that here correct. So, I will have to take this expression and say gamma d theta by d e and j omega gamma it is gamma d theta by d t is going to be j omega gamma d theta by d e e a c we have done this I have done this many times. So, I can write it right away, but you should become familiar with this practice it you would know d theta by d t can be written as d theta by d e d e by d t d e by d t is going to give you j omega e a c So, this is the first part the second part k 1 1 minus theta is going to give me k 1 d c 1 minus theta s s So, I am going to get k 1 as k 1 d c multiplied by 1 plus b 1 a c theta I am going to write it as theta s s plus d theta by d e e a c. So, again I am going to get 4 terms out of this first term is a constant second and third terms will be a function of e a c the fourth term is going to be e a c square multiplied by some factor I am going to neglect that. So, I will get 3 terms out of this. So, instead of copying from the board you should actually expand it it will take some time I am writing it fast because I have done it many many times. But you will learn even if you make a mistake it is all right you will learn only when you try that takes 10 minutes first you may still make some mistakes fix it and then when a new equation is given you would be able to handle it. So, the moment you give me this equation and tell k 1 and k 2 are dependent on potential I can tell right away it is going to be b 1 k 1 d c 1 minus theta s s minus b 2 k 2 d c theta s s by k 1 is multiplying the theta k 2 is multiplying the theta with a negative sign I am going to say k 1 d c plus k 2 d c plus j omega gamma. So, I would take the factor here factor here and I know that is going to come in the numerator the constant terms will cancel out each other because of steady state condition E c square terms I am going to neglect them. So, I can definitely tell this is going to give me b 1 k 1 this is going to give me b 2 k 2 all the 
all the first order terms with respect to theta will be rearranged and brought to the left side and then brought down that is going to give me minus k1 would become plus k1 here minus k2 will become plus k2 when it goes to the left side. But this comes after trying many many of these types of reactions and if you have second order reaction you can still write it becomes a little more complex. But you should get familiar with that by practice. Now I can do this for one intermediate species when it uh, when it has multiple intermediate species I will have to write the equation put it in matrix form and then invert that. Are you able to get the d theta by d e expression not yet ok I will wait. So, this is the basic I do not want to say trick basic step in this I think writing the Faraday current you can do it without any difficulty given a mechanism you can write the Faraday current given a mechanism you can write the mass balance equation it should not be too difficult let us write this expression and write this expression. Expanding the Faraday current in Taylor series is not going to be that difficult again expand in Taylor series truncate it. The main trick is to find d theta by d e using the mass balance equation whether it is one species or many species you need to get the d theta by d e that is if I give a potential sinusoidal potential how will the surface coverage value change in a very simple reaction when you do not have any intermediate species whenever I give a potential rate constant also goes up and comes down current also goes up and comes down it is in sync with the potential for the Faraday reaction. In these cases you would find that it is not going to be in sync the surface coverage value when the potential changes like this for me it is going from time t equal to 0 to larger values goes like this surface coverage value will oscillate but it will not be in phase with this current will also oscillate and by and large it will not be in phase with this that is why you get a capacitance resistance and another resistance a Maxwell element there. If it is going to be in phase you will get only a resistor if d theta by d is a constant constant meaning it is independent of omega you would get a simple resistor when omega is 0 or omega is infinity d theta by d is going to be constant when omega tends to infinity d theta by d is going to be 0 when omega is 0 it is not going to be necessarily 0 it depends on the parameter values but it is going to be a fixed number. So, when omega tends to 0 at very low frequency it will look like a resistor that is why whether it is this whether it is this it always settles at the real axis it can even settle at this axis but it has to settle at a real value it may or may not be a positive value. But anywhere else at intermediate frequencies it is not going to be a constant it is going to vary with omega and this tells us how it is going to vary with omega it gives us a proper expression for that. So, how many of you are able to get d theta by d in now ok. So, I am going to assume that the rest of you would also be able to get it if you are given little more time and I can simplify it a little bit saying the dc expression for this mass balance equation it tells k 1 d c 1 minus theta that is going to be equal to k 2 d c theta therefore, it becomes a little simpler. Sir, Which one that is z real minus z imaginary it is called Nyquist plot it is called complex plane plot where you have impedance going like this impedance going like this impedance going like this impedance going like this and starts at high frequency ends up at low frequency and my point was that it is going to end up on the real axis. As long as we keep our assumption that it is not mass transfer limited um, solution resistance would not make any change in this conclusion but as long as it is limited by kinetics if you go to low enough frequency it will settle at a point on the real axis. that is not for the theta if you go to low in the frequency theta will 
d theta by d e will be a constant it does not mean theta is going to be a constant. When it goes to infinite frequency theta will be a constant because d theta by d e is going to be 0. Now that we have an expression for d theta by d e even if you have not derived it yet you can take the value from here. I f a c we know we can write it in terms of d theta by d e and we can substitute for that. Look at the first second first term and the second term they are independent of omega third term has d theta by d e and when omega tends to infinity d theta by d e is going to 0 that means when omega tends to infinity this expression will remain this will go towards 0 that means i a c under the condition omega tends to infinity i f a c is going to be f b 1 k 1 d c 1 minus theta s s plus b 2 k 2 d c theta s s multiplied by e a c therefore, I can write this is going to be the admittance when omega tends to infinity divide by E A C and get the admittance at that means inverse of this value is going to be the impedance is going to be the impedance when omega tends to infinity and that is called charge transfer resistance written as R T or R C T. And when you see complex plane plots like this usually although sometimes it is possible for two capacitance loops to merge together but I am going to assume that these are separate well separated loops this point where it hits the real axis first that is going to be the charge transfer resistance. So, you can estimate the charge transfer resistance with this this part tells the value when omega is not tending towards infinity. So, we can substitute for d theta by d e and write the expression here. So, I brought it from the previous page and I have substituted for d theta by d e and rearranged it. So, all that I have done is this expression is brought from the previous page this is a substitution for d theta by d e and bring the E A C to the denominator here. So, you get Faraday admittance. Now, if B 1 is equal to B 2 in this case I can tell the first step and the second step are such that B 1 is equal to B 2 for a particular example particular case then this term will go to 0 correct. So, d theta by d e will go to 0 when B 1 equal to B 2 in this type of reaction when B 1 equal to B 2 Faraday impedance is going to be independent of frequency. Therefore, for a set of parameters I have chosen some parameters and simulated this impedance if I say B 1 equal to B 2 and take the impedance it is going to show me a semicircle I can go to different DC potentials I will always get a semicircle because this entire business of Faraday impedance can be modeled using a resistor and this of course, we are saying it is 0. So, it is going to be a capacitor in parallel with resistor and that is going to just give me a semicircle with high frequency limit is going to be 0 low frequency limit is going to be whatever that fixed number is. This right hand side when I say RHS here I mean K 2 DC minus K 1 DC multiplied by everything in the bracket which is B 1 minus B 2 K 2 D C K 1 D C K 2 D C J omega gamma all those terms there ok. Now, B 1 may be may not be greater than B 2 that we are not making any assumption we are just saying the entire term there is negative meaning leave alone the J omega part if you look at the other part if B 1 is greater than B 2, but K 2 is less than K 1 or I should probably say more precisely if the numerator there is negative or numerator there is positive. Denominator k 1 is going to be positive k 2 is going to be positive this number is going to be positive and this is anyway a complex number. 
ok. So, I want you to argue and get this when omega increases 1 by omega will decrease. So, when omega increases 1 by omega will decrease if this is negative in the numerator the term will increase in terms of the actual value not the magnitude ok. If this term increases what happens to the Faraday impedance that also increases if Faraday sorry Faraday admittance Faraday impedance will decrease. So, when omega increases impedance decreases that means it is going to look like a circuit with capacitor in it. So, the Faraday impedance in this case is going to be represented by a resistor in parallel with a resistor capacitor. So, it is a Maxwell element one Maxwell element. using similar arguments you can say if the right hand side numerator is positive omega increases 1 by omega will decrease this term here will also decrease because it is a positive term that means Faraday admittance will decrease Faraday impedance will increase you can model that with an inductor like this or you can model it with this allowing for negative values for the elements there after all they are equal. Same set of parameters I have chosen I just taken two different potentials. So, this is completely different set I use some parameters synthesize this data or simulated this data I use another set of parameters. I have gone to one DC and another DC ok. So, when I change the DC value K 1 DC and K 2 DC will change B 1 and B 2 are not going to change gamma is not going to change. So, same system I can superimpose AC on top of 0 0.1 DC with respect to equilibrium 0 0.2 voltage with respect to equilibrium I will get quite different spectrum and yet I do not have to use different circuits I can just use one reaction and model this. Not only that I can also predict the DC current at these two potentials and any other potential also and compare with what the experiment shows you are comfortable with this ok ok two step reaction this is fine you can model this with I do not know if the circuit is there you can model it with the same circuit as what you have seen for the previous reaction except that. I move the solution resistance to be 0 here the double A capacitance is going to be 10 microfarad per square centimeter. What you also notice is that if you have one adsorbed intermediate you get one Maxwell element it does not matter whether the first and second reactions are charge transfer or only the first reaction is Faraday reaction second reaction is not it does not matter as long as we assume that there is no other complexity involved that is there is no film on top of this there is no mass transfer limitation etcetera. Normally the number of adsorbed intermediate will tell you the number of Maxwell elements. It is possible to get very complex set of reactions where some of the reactions are not linearly independent there is a specific way to get this that is if you write 3 4 steps together you might be able to generate the fifth step in which case there is not really a separate step ok those cases you may get fewer number of loops generally for the simple reactions that we look even the reactions you are seeing now few more reactions you can add all those things. If you see uh, actual data showing 1, 2, 3 loops I am going to claim this loop is coming from the double layer 2 loops are present therefore, I need 2 Maxwell elements that means I need 2 intermediate species the loop may look like this also this is one loop this is inductive loop this is another loop it does not matter whether it is inductive or capacitive I would actually give it to you as a homework where I will give you the kinetic parameter I would ask you to generate these two graphs. So, I want you to convince yourself that it is possible to get an inductive loop and a capacitive loop from the same system it does not mean something is special about inductive loop or special about capacitive loop 
it just the values can be on the positive side negative side when you rearrange them these values can be positive or negative depending on the potential that means it can give you an inductive loop or capacitive loop many times people people try to come up with some sophisticated argument for inductive loops you don't see it that frequently you do see it occasionally you see capacitive loops more often but inductive loop is not necessarily any more special than a capacitive loop okay you can get the inductive loop here it does not mean you have magnetism in the system it's just that this spectrum that's generated by this reaction can also be generated by a circuit with inductance that's all it means okay. likewise you can model the inductive loop with negative capacitance negative resistance it does not mean there is current flowing in the opposite direction okay. what i want to show you next is i'll start it here but we'll continue with actual derivations later I want you to visualize the scenario. We have an electrode here. The liquid has a reactant. Okay, it's P. It can react on the surface and form Q. That's similar to our ferroferry reaction. Okay, so this is electron transfer reaction. And we can consider reversible. For simplicity, I'm going to consider only the forward reaction here. In addition, it has a chemical. We call it as A minus. it can adsorb on the surface a minus can adsorb on the surface or the adsorbed species can go back when it adsorbs it is actually coming from the liquid and adsorbing it's not the metal adsorbed that we saw before when it adsorbs it releases an electron it can take an electron and go back into the solution once this is blocked by adsorbed the reaction here cannot happen on that area so if you look at it from the front of an electrode this is looking from the side this is electrode this is liquid look from the front if a adsorbed is occupying this area that area is not available for this reaction only on pure metal this reaction can happen okay so this is called electro sorption or electro adsorption reaction together this is called e e a r reaction so qualitatively i'll describe why i want to choose this and what you expect to get out of this and then we'll go into the detail in the next class when you go to positive potential we expect this reaction to happen faster electron is taken out consumed when you go to positive potential we expect the forward reaction here to happen faster we expect the reverse reaction here to happen to a lesser level okay so current here will increase current here will also increase when you go to very positive voltages this entire surface will be covered by a adsorb almost entire surface will be covered by a adsorb that means you can't have more of this reaction you can't have more of this reaction so current start at low potentials you increase the potential current will increase after some time current will decrease so this will give rise to a spectrum which goes like this so i want you to be able to derive the equation for this and for a given set of parameters generate the current potential curve and the impedance curve impedance at this potential impedance at this potential impedance at this potential pot various potentials you should be able to generate then also explain what is meant by this negative impedance why is it physically okay to have this okay we'll stop here today